My name is Abhishek Jain and through this video I am going to explain how can you collect a resource consumption for any running container. So by collecting a resource consumption for any running container we can actually define how much resource we need to allocate to that container where that container is going to run into the production environment. So it is really important for us to figure out you know the resource consumption and baseline that under the maximum load for a defined period of time. Docker also provides some command through which we can always calculate the resource consumption but there are few limitation with the docker commands which actually doesn't fulfill the requirement to collect the resource consumption and define that how much resources we need to allocate to the container. So let's first find out what docker has to offer for collecting a resource consumption for any running container and then we're going to write a small shell script that would help us to collect the data points for the resource consumption for a defined period of time under let's say a maximum loop. So let's quickly jump into the demo part and see what docker commands we can use to collect the resource consumption. As you can see on my screen docker provides a docker stats right. So if I just put docker stats help, it will give what all options docker stats has. Dash dash all means if you just put docker stats, you can use dash a as well. What it does is it's you know calculate the resource consumption for all the containers whether it is in a running state or not, right? But the problem with this command is it's it's streaming, it's collecting, you know, the resources and continuously just streaming that data back to our terminal, right? So you can see that, right? But if I don't use that all command, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna give us a resource consumption for running containers on, right? So if I just put docker ps, you can see only these many containers are running. Right? And you can see if I use the docker stats, it's just give these stats for the running con running containers. Now, now the problem with this command is, you know, it cannot give us, you know, data into a collective manner. So if you want to collect a data for, let's say, any running container, then how you will collect the data, right? So what you can do is, there is another command or another options which docker stats has is no stream. So what it does as name suggests, it won't collecting a resource consumption continuously and just throwing back to the terminal. It will just collect the resource consumption for any given point in time and it will just throw that one time resource consumption and just reflect back onto the terminal. Right. So now, but in real time, if we really want to define that how much resources we need to allocate to any running container, then we have to have, uh, you know, the statistics or the resource consumptions numbers for defined period of time under the maximum load. Right. So it's how you can define a maximum load is completely depend upon your non functional requirement when you collect when you develop an application and you want to run under the container. So that is not you know something which I wanted to emphasize in this video. But I just wanted to tell you how can you collect the data for a defined period of time by using a docker stats. Right. Now, the next part which I wanted to collect is when we run this docker says stats, you can see we are getting CP utilizations, we have a mem used and the limit. Limit says the maximum limit or the maximum memory limit which container can consume and mem uses is the actual memory consumption at that given point in time. Then the mem percentage is just throwing, you know, the percentage utilization of memory. Then we have a network IO which actually tells us how many send and receive request has been received. Then we have a block IO which actually tells us the read and write from the file system. Then we have, we have a PIDS that tells us how many threads and the processes are being run associated with that particular container, right? So now, <clears throat> as I mentioned that this Docker set doesn't provide us the flexibility to collect the data. And there are a lot of tools through which you can actually monitor that. I already published that video where I just explained how can you just monitor the Docker stats resource consumption by the, by using a Prometheus and Grafana. But this time I wanted to just write a shell script because that would give you more control depending upon when you want to run it and how much data you want to collect it. So that would give you the complete control. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, let me check if I have written everything. Okay. So it looks like I have already written a one uh, shell script. So let me just quickly uh, create the, uh, first let me just take the backup of that shell script. Which I have already written. Okay. So now 
what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a small shell script through which what we're gonna do is we're gonna just collect all the resource consumption which are coming from the docker stats into one file and then that file we're gonna just push into uh, let's say in a postgres db and from there we can just represent the data onto the grafana but pushing a data into the postgres db and just showing that data points on the very uh, beautiful manner on the grafana that we're gonna do i've seen in our next video okay so to write a shell script the shebang which we have to introduce and then what we're gonna do i'm just gonna use uh, one uh, Linux built-in command that is seconds and just to just to give you a brief the what second does is it's actually counts the number of seconds uh, for which this particular script is running so it just actually gives us for how long that particular script is running in in, in terms of seconds right so very first thing which I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna define let's say I want to run this script for 20 seconds so what it's gonna do is it's just gonna collect the resource consumption for 20 seconds and the next thing which I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a while command okay and then I'm just gonna use a second so second is just gonna give me the uh, the number of seconds for this uh, for this particular script when we start running so it will give the for how long that particular script is running now I'm gonna run this for less than dollar and so it means it will run this for 20 seconds now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reiterate the docker stats command with no stream okay so I'm just gonna use a docker ps that would give me the name of a container so you can see my previous video where I just put all these commands how can you use these commands how can you format the data and all this stuff okay then I'm just gonna use a noise stream and I just wanted to route this data and I'm just gonna I'm going to append it because it will run in a loop and the next time if I won't use this double double greater than then the previous entry will get removed right so let me just put docker resource That's it, I believe. Just and you can do all the cosmetic things like just check whether the report exists or not. So I'm not worried about that part because I just wanted to give the logic how you can just build it and base. From here you can just take it and then you can just start using this particular script. So let me just change the. Let me just make this script executable. And if I just run this. Uh, I just forgot you know to put that equal otherwise we could come simply see that how it is progressing so but if you want to use the same script I mean it would always be good to just prompt something to the terminal so that you can ensure that okay the thing seems to be working fine okay so now it should have given me uh, let me just quickly clear that uh, this minus LTR and if I just open this report then we should be able to see that just see now we have all the data in this particular file right now you will see there are a lot of stuff which we need to clean up like i mean you know you will see that you know the container name id and all those things are repeating again and again right and so we can just remove it and not in this video but in our next video we will do this cleanup along with we will be appending a timestamp as well because if we want to push that data to the grafana then grafana only understand the time series data so we're gonna see in the next video how we can just clean that up and how we can append the time timestamp and then how we can push that data to the postgres and from there how we can represent this into the grafana thanks for watching this video and that's it from my side for this video but in the next video we're gonna see how we can represent this data with the cleanup onto the grafana and if you have any feedback and suggestion please feel free to put that into the comment section and that's it from my side